Good morning. Welcome to the Church in the Woods. I hear the crows praising the Lord this morning. All his creation gives him praise and glory. Hope you're having a wonderful morning wherever you're at today. Maybe you're getting ready to go to church. Maybe this is your church. Um, whatever the case uh, be, I appreciate you watching this morning. We desire your prayers. If you would right now, wherever you're at, just say a prayer for us. Just ask the Lord's will to be done. Um, we've been trying to go live, I think. Some things are going on with Facebook, maybe with the title that we had, with the hashtag we were using. We're, we're in a very, uh, uh, very tough time in America, very um, disturbing times. But I've got good news for you. I've got positive news for you this morning, something that will encourage you. Let me know where you're watching from. While we're waiting for others to sign on, thank you so much for sharing these videos. Uh, when you share these videos... Um, you're sharing the gospel. He told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that's what we're trying to do. That's the reason this ministry was started in 2014. It was to reach the lost, reach people that weren't going to church. Share this video. I promise you it will encourage someone. And it, it, you never know, someone may be saved because the gospel will be preached in it. Um, before we, we get started, I just want to say... You know, when we look back at the beginning of this year we, and we see what happened with George Floyd and, you know, the hashtag say his name was going around, still going around. That's really been stirring on my heart, my wife's heart this week. And, you know, just a couple of hour, a couple of hours from where I live, there was a, uh, a young child that was shot on his bicycle, riding his bicycle, minding his own business, having a good time. And a man walked out of his house and stuck a gun to his head and killed him. That was a black man. Little boy was a white kid. We know that the father of the kid and, and, the, and the man that shot him were uh, together the evening before. So there was no animosity. They were neighbors, knew each other for, I think, eight years. And, you know, there's a lot of things going on. People are saying, well, you know, what about racism in this case? Why is, why is the media not reporting like they did George Floyd? Why, why is there not rioting in the streets? We need to raise up and we need to speak out. And, you know say his name is something that people are coming back to. They're wanting to say the name Cannon Hennett, the young the little boy that was murdered. And it's just it's just more of what's going on in our country, more of the division, the hatred, and the things that are happening. And everybody wants to blame something. We want to blame the gun or we want to blame the victim or we want to blame uh, racism. We want to blame skin color. Uh, we want to blame poverty. We want to blame drugs. I think they think he was on drugs. We want to blame all kind of things. And, and the reason people want to blame is because they're looking for a cause to get on board with. Because if they have a cause, they have hope that they can change something. And so it's, it, it self-perpetuates. It, it's never in a vicious cycle of searching a way to bring hope to yourself and to other people through a cause. And there we have the hashtag, say his name. Or we have people saying, well, we got to, we got to do something in honor of cannon because he was assassinated or killed, murdered by a racist act. You know, we can go on and on with this stuff. But when it comes down to it, whatever the reason was, whatever the motive was for the man that, that took that young boy's life, it comes down to one thing. It's, it's a heart problem. It's in the heart. And God dealt with this. He dealt with it 2,000 years ago on the cross. And we're at a place in our country today that everybody's looking to blame somebody else for their problems or wanting to blame someone else for what they, you know, what the way things are. Hatred and division and, and it's caused cold-blooded murder. That's what we're that's what we're dealing with. Cold-blooded murder. When you can walk up to a child, I don't care who you are, and you can murder a child, I don't even need to go there because I don't want to get in the flesh. But I'm here to tell you today, we've reached an all-time high with wickedness and evil. In our country, but don't 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 think it's anything new, because there's doctors that are cold-blooded murderers every day when they abort a baby. Every single day, there's cold-blooded murder, aborting babies. Just read the news; you can see how the court will rule in favor of some parent that wants to change the gender of their baby, their young child, to a boy or girl. And they have to go to court to battle with the other parent because one of them's got some common sense. The other one's lost their mind. And so the court will, will award the, the one that wants to change it. And the court will even make the, the other parent pay for part of the, what is it called, the canceling for their transgender. Um, 
we have reached a pivotal time in our country, y'all. And, and talking about it and doing causes and all this stuff, and it ain't going to change nothing. It's not going to make anything happen different. You know whose name we need to say? First of all, before I get to that, let me read some names. I want to read three names. We hear George Floyd everywhere I go. George Floyd, George Floyd. Let me, let me read one to you here. JoJo Malone, two years old, killed riding in a car with her mom. Cannon Hennett, five years old. Wilson, North Carolina, killed riding his bike, just like I did, just like you did, five years old, riding our bikes, having a good time. The kid loved everybody. How do you know that? Because when you're a child, you don't have all this, this division in your heart, this, this, this hatred. You think everybody's good. You don't look at people uh, judgmental. You don't, you don't look for, to see what the worst is in someone because you have an innocent heart. It's the closest thing to God on this planet as a child, as far as the way they are. Jesus said, if you want to come to me, come to me as a child. Because he was recognizing publicly and saying, this is, this is the kingdom of heaven. This is how a Christian is. They're, they're, they're not stuck on their self. They're not bitter. They're not holding on to things. And, and, and they're not full of hatred and murder and demons. It comes down to demons. Demons are in, possessing people and causing crazy acts. People don't believe in it. You know, that's amazing. Satan is a real being. He doesn't want you to see him. He doesn't want you to believe in him because he would rather you blame a white man or blame a black man or blame, play the blame game. He would rather you find a cause so you could give yourself a false hope than realize the cause has already been set it's already been accomplished. It's already been done 2,000 years ago on an old rugged cross. Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, hung on a cross, died, rose again the third day because he loves you, because you needed forgiveness, and because he wanted us to have the power to change our environment and things that are around. When I say environment, I don't mean this world. I don't mean a utopia. I mean our spiritual environment. I mean being able to give people real hope, lasting hope, real change. Canon Hennett. And I hope I say this right. Sequoia Turner, eight years old, Atlanta, Georgia, killed riding in the car with her mom. Natalie Wallace, seven years old, Chicago, killed playing in the yard. Rhoda Giles, Jr., eight years old in Alabama, killed in crossfire in a mall. Man, if this don't fire you up, there's something wrong with you. If, if this don't get your attention, I believe you may, you may I don't know what it's going to take. But when we say people's name and we hashtag it and we get on a cause and we think, well, this is it. We're going to rally behind this. We've missed the name above all names. We've missed the only name that can change. We've missed the name that makes devils tremble. We've missed the name that salvation comes through. We've missed the name that can make someone be healed from disease and sickness. We've missed the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ the one who died on the cross for us, the one who loves us, the one that's seated on the right hand of glory, the one that's given me the message for you today because I don't have a message. All I have is scripture. And I'm telling you today, you need what God has to say. He did give me this this morning. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than himself. Look not every man on his own things. My Lord, could we do that? Could we not think about what it, what, how do I get mine? What it's all about me from the church to the alley. It doesn't matter. That's the attitude today. Jesus didn't have that attitude. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God their Father." Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's my God. He's my Savior. Jesus Christ is the only reason I can stand here today and, and even 
breathe because he gives breath to my body. But we want to blame the breakdown of the family. I've heard that one. I wrote that one down this morning. Or what about this? Talking about abortion doctors, what about candidates? What about political candidates? People tell me, well, don't get political. We don't need to get political. I'm not running for office. I'm running for heaven. I'm running that race trying to reach heaven. I'm running that race, that race for God. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be bold, and I'm going to stand up, and I'm going to tell you. There are candidates in the Democratic Party that agree with abortion, that agree with transgenderism, and then they've called themselves Christians. You can't have it both ways. You can't live on both sides of the fence. Some people want to sit on the fence, but you're going to get kicked off. You've got to stand one way or the other. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve Satan. When we try to change the word of God, the church tries to accept sin because they don't want to offend, then they're distorting the truth. They're distorting the word of God. That's where we're at today. That's the problem we have today. Jesus said, speaking of what's wrong with the world, he said, that which cometh out of a man, that's what defileth the man. For within him, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within that defile a man. He was saying, it doesn't matter what you try to do on the outside to create some kind of cause or something you can do to, to, to work toward a better place. Inside, your heart is going to speak. Whatever's in there is going to come out. You can't change something on the outside and expect the inside to be right. God has to deal with the inside. He wants to deal with the heart. The problem in our country today is it's not racism. It's not violence and murder and and and. Poverty, greed, wars, hatred. That's, that's in our world. It's terrible. But you know what the real problem is? It's the heart of man. It's the heart in a man. And unless that heart is changed and made new, you can hashtag to the cows come home, everybody's name you want to name. You can have bike rides. You can have riots. You can burn your own village down or your own community down if you want to do it, but it ain't going to change a doggone thing. The only thing that's going to change is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what changes a man's heart. Now, if you know more than God, if you're greater than God, then figure out another way because God says it's the foolishness of preaching that saves the lost. He says it's the cross. It's by the cross. And the way we come to God is through the cross. The way a man changes, changes by the cross. Preaching of the cross is foolishness to those that don't believe. But to us that are saved, it is the power of God. It's the power of God in the salvation. <clears throat> Help me, Lord. The Bible says God even knows what we think. But God hath revealed them to us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God knows everything about you. He knows your heart. He knows the intents of your heart. He knows your thoughts both consciously and subconsciously. There's nothing hid from him. There's nothing that's not revealed to him. And, and what we have happening in our country today is a great distortion of facts and truth and deception. The reason the mainstream media carries George Floyd's four funeral services and gold casket and we hardly hear anything about a young boy murdered on a bicycle, the reason is it doesn't fit the narrative that pushes the division and hatred in our country. It doesn't create a vacuum and a void that Satan can fill with unrighteousness and evil and wickedness to make men act out evil, evil and wicked. It's all a spiritual thing, every bit of it. There's none of it political. There's none of it social. It is spiritual, every bit of it. But we don't want to see that. We would rather think, well, maybe we can change something. God knows our thoughts. He knows our heart. He knows we can't change anything. So he did it for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's God's answer. That's the answer to our problem. The Bible says the Lord knoweth the thoughts of men that they are vanity. The Bible says, I, the Lord, search the heart. God searches every heart. He looks at my heart before I preach. 
He searches my heart. He reveals things to me that I should repent of. He shows me my inadequacies, my lack of faith, my desire to not do this, my desire to do fleshly things. He shows me all that. And the reason God shows me that is not because he wants to offend me or because he wants to beat me down, but he wants me to understand how he's glorified in me serving him because it's not by might nor my power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. It's by the spirit of God that we can change. It's by the spirit of God that we can work and serve God. It's by the spirit of God that we have fruit in our life. The Bible reveals our thoughts of our heart. He gives us his holy word. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but shall heap to themselves teachers having each and ears. Why? Because the Bible reveals their heart. They want to bring someone in, some hireling, some wolf in sheep's clothing that will preach a lie. And they know it subconsciously, they don't want to know it. They, or consciously, subconsciously, they, they can't get away from it. So they, they look for other ways to get through it and make themselves feel spiritual because the word of God cuts them like a knife. The Bible tells us, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing asunder and dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow of the, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God discerns the heart. <clears throat> when I read this word, it convicts me. When I read this word, it shows me the direction I'm to go. When I'm confused about what I see on the news or, or what people say, the word of God lifts the veil and shows me exactly what's going on. The enemy is very good at deception. He's very good at hiding and causing an action through others so he's not seen. But once he's revealed, once he's called out and, and shown, he cowers and runs. Why? Because Jesus Christ took his teeth at the cross. The Bible says Satan is a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. He roars to create fear. And when people are fearful and afraid, that's when he moves in that direction to create hopelessness, to build an evil cause that somebody can call a righteous movement. And the truth of the matter is, because he's a roaring lion, many people never take the chance to stand firm and do what he to God told us to do, is to stand with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, quench, uh, shoe our feet with the gospel of the preparation of peace, gird our loins with truth. The word of God is our sword. We don't do that because we're afraid. That's what's wrong with the church today. That's why the church is not making the impact that it's supposed to be making today because of one thing, and that's fear. Because of that roaring lion that's walking around the church building or walking through your community just a roaring, and people are cowards. People are afraid. And God is saying, I want someone that will stand in the gap. I'm looking for someone that will stand up and believe that I am who I say I am and I'll do what I say I'll do. I'm looking for someone that's going to believe that I have the power to set free. Believe that I have the power to move on this earth, to change the whole view of everything. Believe that I have the power to send real revival, not some stupid meeting that we plan and put on a calendar. I'm talking real revival. I'm talking the Spirit of God planning it. God showing up. The power of God falling on people and people getting saved and people leaving, feeling full of the Spirit of God. That's what we need. The Bible teaches us that our battle is not with flesh and blood. Now, we don't see that because what we see is a bunch of... I'm gonna, Lord, help me not to get in the flesh. We see a bunch of people burning flags, rioting, burning their own houses down. It's just stupid. I can't, it, it, it's ignorant. But it's more than that. It's spiritual. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The battle's right here between our ears. And that's why the media's pushing propaganda. That's why Satan's pushing the, the false narrative. That's because people are receiving it. You got two eyes, you got two ears. It's coming in both ways. And you know what? 
We're letting it come in. We're not calling it out. We're not saying, hold now. The Bible tells me to, to take them thoughts in captivity. That doesn't line up with the Word of God. That don't sound right. <clears throat> We're not supposed to go, well, I don't want to offend anybody. I better not say nothing. We're supposed to take that thought captive. That's how we do battle. That's how we war. People say, well, we need to stand up. You're doggone right we need to stand up. We need to stand up and call things out for what they are. Not my opinion. Not what I think. Not my political views. What thus saith the Lord. That's what matters. That's what's going to change this country. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Listen to me. We are battling demonic entities, dark spiritual wickedness in high places. High places. And we are in a situation today where all of this stuff that we see going on, all the trauma, all the violence, all the whatever you want to label it, all the, it's just sin. It comes down to one thing. Are you ready for it? It comes down to your lost child or your lost brother or sister or your lost mom and daddy or your lost soul. Because the Bible says, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? It's about a soul. Can you hear me? It's about lost souls. It's not about George Floyd. It's not about Cannon Hennett. It's about lost souls. It's always been about lost souls. And because we don't want to see that or we ignore that or we're blinded, we get caught up in everything else that the devil is using to deceive us. God has been speaking to our hearts. He's been speaking through the word. He's been speaking by his spirit in people's lives, dealing with hearts. And there's people that will ignore it and ignore it and ignore it until God says, you know what? I know your thoughts. I'll give you up to a reprobate mind. I know your mind. You don't want to, you don't want to listen to me. You'd rather serve the creature than the creator. You'd rather have it your way. You'd rather go against what I say. You don't agree with me. You know more than me, even though I created you in this whole world and things you have no idea I own. And I'm above and I set, I'm set apart from everything. I'm holy. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, <clears throat> but became vain in their imagination, that their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. They become as fools. And even if they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful. Now, the Bible tells us that some of these things I read will be a sign of the last days. Know this also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. Now what I've just read to you proves, if without a shadow of a doubt, that we are in the last days. We're in perilous times. All this stuff is happening all around us. You'd have to be blind some are spiritually blind not to understand that we sit on the edge, right on the brink of the return of Jesus Christ. And instead of being cowards, instead of being afraid to stand, or instead of jumping on a cause that's worldly and carnal, we need to carry the cause of Christ. We need to carry the gospel to a lost and dying world. We need to understand they're not going to come inside of our churches. They're not going to come and ask you anything. They're looking at what's going on in the news. They're looking at a church that's afraid. They're looking at Christians that don't have answers. They need hope. They need Jesus. Say his name. Say his name. You don't have to say George Floyd, Cannon Hennett, 
or the other was at. Say Jesus. 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 That's where the power's at. In the name of Jesus, devils tremble. At the name of Jesus, people get saved. At the name of Jesus, peace comes upon you in the middle of the worst storm of your life. The Bible says they'll be ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Always hearing it. Always trying to learn. But they don't get it. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit has to give it to them. It's nothing you can do through carnal, carnalism or worldliness. It's by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, we live in a time, a society, where people just don't love each other. As a matter of fact, the article about young Cannon Hennett, his father, his dad the next day in an interview said, you know, the Bible tells us we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's why he had that man over at his home. Love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible tells us, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We can tell people we love them. We can say we love them. We can do all these things on the outwardly. But the Bible says, as we think in our heart, so are we. Oh, hey, girl. Hey. That old, you know, we've all heard it. Hey, call me when you get home, you, you know. Let's just be honest. Oh, here comes, here comes that. Hey, man, what's up? Yeah, let's go grab lunch. He walks off and you're like, listen, as you think in your heart, so are you. So don't blow smoke and say, oh, I love people. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God and have bitterness and hatred in your heart and unforgiveness. We can't, it, don't, it doesn't work. The Bible said, and, and I, I need to say this, we think because we believe something makes it right. That's where we're at when it comes to truth. People believe because they think that, therefore, is truth. The Bible says, the Bible says, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord ponders the heart. We can think a lot of ourselves, and we do. But God looks at the heart, and he ponders the heart. He thinks on the heart. He he. I believe he studies our hearts. And I believe God, I know God wants our hearts full of him, full of his spirit. Some people say, I don't believe in God. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Not with his mouth. The Bible didn't say he said it with his mouth. It says he has said it with his heart. Why? Because God looks at the heart. Not lip service. He's looking at the heart. There are many atheists that are on the church row that have no idea they're atheists. They believe they're children of God. You know why? Because their heart is saying, I don't believe in God. Their mouth, they sing hymns. Oh, bless the Lord, all oh, his soul. Amazing grace, how great you are. Oh, whatever you want to sing. I drop money in the plate. I teach Sunday school. I preach. I carry my kids to church. But when it comes during the week, you don't believe God has any power to change anything. You don't believe God is even real. You believe maybe it's a figment of our imagination. But hey, I feel better going to church. I feel better being around people that make me believe that there's really a God. God has said the fool has said in his heart there is no God. The fool. Stop playing the fool and get on your knees at the altar and reach this God, meet this God that you've been claiming to have and understand that when you get changed, you're born again. You're not the same. You won't act the same. You won't do the same stuff you do. If you do, you'll be full of conviction from the Holy Spirit of God because you're his child. Oh, me. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Our hearts are more deceitful than anything out here. We're, we're warped. We have warped hearts because of what happened all the way back in the Garden of Eden. And unless the heart is dealt with, nothing has changed. You can't offer enough sacrifices to God. You can't do enough good deeds for someone. You can't go to church enough. You must be born again. That's the only way. There is no other way. It's that simple. It's that simple. 
God says he'll change our heart. And the way he does this is through the gospel. We know that he sent Jesus Christ to die on a cross for us. The Bible says that he commended his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means right, right now, whoever's watching me, you feel like you're just as low as low can be. You're as wicked and dark hearted and you know you think to yourself there is no way he could love me. Well, my friend, you are completely wrong. He loved you before you were born. He's loved you with an everlasting love. He commended his love to you. That's why he died on the cross. So you would see the demonstration of his love to mankind. The Bible says God is love. The Bible says he that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. I love that. Because I'm not a fake. I'm not one of these preachers that go around and say, oh, well, I've never done this and I've always loved God. You're full of it. You're full of something and you're full of pride. I didn't love God. I loved David. I love my sin. I love the pleasures of sin. I played church. I acted the part when I was, I was an actor. I could have won an Oscar in my church. The truth of the matter is I was as wicked as anyone else out there. But God, who is rich in mercy, by his great grace, his love for me, arrested me one day and said, Son, child, I'm going to let you see yourself as you really are. I'm going to show you who you are because I ponder the heart. I've searched your heart, and you need to see what I see. And when he opened the scales off my eyes by the Spirit of God through the preaching of the Word, I saw the corruption, the vile wickedness of my soul. And I understood how a loving God could cast me into a devil's hell because I was so wicked and vile and dark-hearted and separated. I hated God. I hated God with my heart because I was of the devil, because I would not been born again. That's what God sees. He sees a hatred. We call out to him as we're lost beings, say, we hate you. We want it our way. We're full of pride. We want what we want. That's how the devil is. That's what happened. That's why he was cast out of heaven. I know that sounds extreme. And I know some of y'all are probably like, what in the world? Listen to me. You don't see yourself as God sees you. God sees the heart. You can't fake it. You can't earn it. It's by receiving the free gift of salvation. The grace of God that loves you in spite of yourself and will save you, change you, fill you with his spirit, and then bless God, use you to reach people that were just like you. Oh, but God, say his name, Jesus. Let's say his name because he's the one that can do it. He's the only one. The Bible says, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Now, I just told you, when we're lost, we don't love God. I just read to you, it says, not that we love God, but that He loved us. That's called agape love. That's, you know, after Christ went to the cross, there had to be a new word for love. Mankind couldn't describe that love. That love is indescribable. I experienced that love January 18, 2003 on a golf course. Many people that's heard me preach know my testimony. Some have heard it more than they want to hear it. But I don't get tired of saying it. You know why? Because the love of God changed my life. His love is power. His love is forgiveness. His love is the safest place that you'll ever be. His love permeates heaven. His love permeates His children on earth as the Holy Ghost sheds the love of God in our hearts to this lost and dying world so we can love the unlovable, so we can go to try to reach people we don't want care, care to care for how they act and things they say. We say, you know, but I love their soul, and I don't know why. It's because the Holy Ghost sheds the love of God, not the love of man, the love of God in our hearts. God says, I'll give you a new heart. A new heart also will I give you, 
and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart and out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Do you need a new heart today? Do you need a heart transplant? Do you have heart disease called sin? God knows it. God knew the day you were born where you'd be today. He knew what you'd do back yonder. He knew who you would hurt over here. He knew how wicked you would be. And guess what? God could at any time took your breath or not allowed your heart to beat. And that would have been it. You deserved it. You earned that. But you know why he didn't? The same reason he didn't do it to me. Love. Love. You'll never be loved like God loves you. You'll never understand true love until you come to Christ. Never. God is love. His presence is love. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's, it's a gift of God. It's free. It's free. He gives us his love. That's why he says, freely you've been given, freely give. When he gives us his love, he wants us to share, our, share that love with others. How do you share that? The gospel. The gospel. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power. Think about that now. Gave them the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born of not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Being born again is powerful. I don't know about these people that say, well, I got born again. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know about that. Because I can tell you the God I met was full of power, and full of love, full of mercy, full of grace. And the power transformed my life that I was no longer of this world. But I was in another world, seated in heavenly places. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. God changes my mind. He changed my heart. He changed everything about me. Instantly. It weren't a step program. I didn't have to get counseling. I got the real thing. And you can have it too. Today. Right where you're at. You can have it right now. Do you want it? You can get it if you want it. I promise you that. All you have to do. Wherever you're at. Whoever you are. In repentance. Bow your head or lift up your head. However you want to do it. But in repentance you say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I have sinned. I know that I'm wicked by the Spirit of God dealing with me through this message. I sense this. I know. You know it. You don't understand it, but you have faith all of a sudden to believe it. It's real to you now. For the first time in your life, this is real. You've heard it over and over, but all of a sudden, it's got you by the heart. That's God's Spirit. He's saying, now is the time of salvation. Now is the day. And what you do with your heart, because He's pondering your heart now. He's watching your heart. Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I believe on Jesus Christ with my heart. I believe he died on a cross for me and rose again the third day. I believe. Save me, Lord. And my friend, I promise you that you'll receive the power of God to transform a dead soul to something alive and new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You cannot meet God and be the same. You cannot get born again and not have power in your life. There is no way because the Spirit of God gives you power to be saved. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. If you've made a decision today for Jesus Christ, if you surrendered and said, Lord, I'm tired of trying to do this on my own. I know I'm lost. I want the real thing. Call out to him. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Say his name. Say his name. Jesus, wherever you're at. Jesus, save me. 
That's the three most powerful words you'll ever speak. Jesus, save me. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again the third day. I don't understand it, but I just believe it. And I feel the Lord, he'll save you, and you'll be born again. And if you made that decision today, you type in, I am just one. Right now, type in, I am just one. The reason we ask you to do that, so we can see it, the world can see it. He says, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. It's time we quit being ashamed. It's time we start standing. And also, when we see I am just one, we're going to message you. We're going to send you a free package full of a lot of material that will help you get started on your Christian walk. Type in I am just one. We'll message you and find out about your decision, and we'll send you a free package. Courtesy of the Lord moving on people's hearts to donate to this ministry. That's where it comes from. We spend it, they send it, we spend it for the glory of God to give back to you because God loves you. It's all about him trying to reach lost souls because of his love for you and me. Please share this video. I love everybody out there. I can't see you with my eyes, but spiritually I can see you in my heart. I sense God's presence all over me. And I thank you, Lord, and I praise your holy name. You are worthy of all praise and glory. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.